Well, hello, folks. Welcome back once again to Fist of Java Save the Universe. This is Fist 25, and we're not here to do a ship review today. We're going to be talking about Urkel.games. Um, we're talking about Alpha 316, and we're going to talk about systems and weapons for this patch using both this version of Urkel and the new version of Urkel, the capacitor priority stuff. And uh, let's get started. Okay, folks, if you're just joining us, um, this Fist 25, I do a lot of ship reviews and other guides, I guess, around the verse. But uh, um, this, you know, it's the holidays right now, and I kind of wanted to make a short video on systems and things like that. Um, what I have found works best in Alpha 315 and uh, 316, which is really just 315.2. So, um, I guess I don't know if that's an inside joke or not, but uh, hopefully you got that because... 316 was such a light patch that this really feels like 315.2 with some bug fixes. But anyway, let's get started. Let's first talk about weapons. So I have pulled up here a uh, what I think is probably the best starter ship for the money, the Aegis Avenger Titan. Um, this is the stock loadout of the ship. Right now, uh, it comes with a gimbaled size 3 and two uh, size 2 gimbaled weapons. If you don't know what the gimbal means, that's okay. What that means is that when you have gimbal mode turned on by hitting the G key and seeing the dotted line, dotted circle around your reticle, that means the gimbals are on and they kind of auto track the target as long as they're within that inner circle there. Um, the alternative to having gimbals is going fixed. So the rule of thumb here is um, whatever your hard point size is, for instance, the nose gun on the Avenger Titan, is a size four um so it can fit all the size four guns here but you can also stick a size three gimbal on it you can buy at any of the uh the stores that sell ship weapons and then it'll auto track so the trade-off is you go down a size of weapon but you do get uh auto tracking um the only caveat with that is with size one weapons if you uh you can always gimbal a size one hardpoint with a size one gimbal and equip a size one weapon. So in the case of uh, like an, a Mustang or an Aurora or something like that, um, you should always have your gimbals on there because the maximum side of uh, size of those weapon hardpoints is size one. So make sure it's fully. But that being said, let's go ahead. And uh, I don't when you're a little bit more advanced, you usually don't fly with gimbals. You you do fly with fixed weapons. Um because you just get used to that reticle and, and firing in the middle and, and kind of figuring out the lead and the lag pips, whatever you have set up. And that's that's the way most most people, you know, they, they advance to that uh, eventually. So let's talk about gimbal size three weapons right now. Um, a lot of people know that in 314 um, that the weapons were nerfed, the ballistic weapons. So. I'll give you an idea here. The ballistic Gatlings here are both 800 DPS. Um, they got a nerf in the ammo capacity. Happened. Um, they got a buff in their damage output. So you can see that like this Mantis G220 does 800 DPS, a lot more than this size two uh, energy. I'll call them lasers, but really it, it does double that damage. However, while this Badger Repeater does recharge over time, this Mantis Gatling does not. When it runs out of ammo, it's out. And the ammo count over here is 265. Not a whole lot um, of ammo. It goes real, real fast. Maybe one chip, maybe two, maybe three. Depends on how conservative, conservative you are with it. Um, the only caveat with the ships that have a ton of ammo storage is just one, and that right now is the Ares Inferno. It's a size 7 Ballistic Gatling, and it has a ton of ammo. Multiple encounters. With but with this size ship, uh, with all other size ships, until we figure out ammo capacity, so not we, but CIG, um, I recommend not equipping any 
any ballistic weapons to your ship. That includes what is typically the highest DPS, the, the ballistic Gatlings. Includes the ballistic repeaters, like the Shredder. You can see it has an ammo count of 135. The ballistic Scattergun, the Predator. Ammo count of uh, 70. 70 shots with this. Even though it's a single shot, it's still 70. And then the ballistic cannons, which all have the uh, uh, ammo count of 200. Now they do fire slower, so maybe you get a little bit more use out of them. You do get less DPS. So what I would highly recommend, um, we're not going to talk about distortion builds today, but we'll talk about laser cannons. These are repeater. I'm not really going to talk about laser scatter guns. Not that many people use them. They are not really set up right in the game right now. People use cannons and with a repeater, let's say we'll go with the CF337. Now, the reason we're going to stay with the CF series made by Klaus and Werner is because I want you to take a look at the prices. This attrition three here, what used to be probably the best laser repeater in the game um, because it did more damage as it heated up. Um, it has decent range. Not really. 1540 is, is the range for max damage. Um, I think you can get it engaged a little bit further out, but uh, it does fight, you know, it does the same amount of damage. It's 500 DPS, right? So it does 60 alpha damage and a fire rate of 500 per minute. Infinite ammo, but it does have to recharge. The price for this size three weapon is 12,000. Up at UBC, and you can only buy it at Lorville. NDB 30, which is tip, actually a neutron gun, but it does, it does the same damage as laser. Same damage, but goes for $13,950. You, but you can buy it at two other places, so it's a good substitute. But the Panther here, you can buy this Panther, whoops, for $8,925 at Area 18. And, um, or if you go to the Lagrange points uh, for Hurst and Hurl 2 and L4, $10,500. Still cheaper than the other guns, and it does the exact same damage, so that's what I recommend equipping. Um, let's get into size twos. Now, the argument against cannons versus repeaters. Sure, you could go. Well, let's stay with the size three here. You could go with this Panther uh, 337, 500 DPS or the laser cannon, which, by the way, is also 500 DPS. The difference in these is the fire rate. So while this Omni Sky 9 does 500 DPS, Alpha damage is 150, so if you are if you can get more shots on target, then you will kill the target faster. Time to kill is faster. But, a couple things to keep in mind. The range is 1295, the speed is 700, and the fire rate is 200. You go over to the Panther, the fire rate is 500. The range is 1540, the speed is 1400. So it's a faster shot, has a little bit more range, and it has a faster fire rate but it does less damage per shot. It's typically the meta right now in 315, 316. I guess everybody has to play 360. Um, and it's what I would recommend. It's what people I know that do dogfighting in this game recommend. So I would say stick with the laser repeaters. Uh, the scatter guns, while well, the Dominance 3 does do a lot of alpha damage per shot, 440. Um, it has very low range, so you have to be very close, and it is a spread, so it's pellets. And you'll, you know, you, you do have unlimited ammo once it recharges. So if you're, if you like the real in close fighting, the atmospheric bounties usually get real close. Um, you could, you know, put that maybe on the nose gun of the Titan, and then back it up with two laser repeaters. It's your choice, but um, this is my recommendation with the repeater now i would take off the gimbal and i would make every weapon a fixed weapon and doing that we're going to see the max damage we're going to go with the cf447 again it's uh just a little bit less in price than the attrition four and we'll go with the panther 337s for the mounted weapons now in this version of urkel um it tells us our base dpms with everything being equal 16.4. Now, if we switch over to the capacitor version, um, this actually gives us our power triangle here. And 
it will change this a little bit um, using, I don't know if you, anybody's ever used this version um, to do it. You just go to uh, this little link up here at Urkel.games. It's dev.urkel.games. I'll pop you over to this uh, version of the site, which is what's what it's going to be in the future. If we were to choose a size four Rhino up here instead of a gimbal, um, we'll choose the size three other and guns. Now this is, it's kind of weird. It's going to give us, it gives us different numbers and, and you got to take into account that this version of the website is still in work. Um, I don't use it all that much except to maybe mess with the power triangle, but it does have some really good things we'll get into with systems. Um, so the first thing it tells you your region pool size is 4,500. Uh, fill rate is 3000. I'm not sure exactly where that comes from, but it kind of gives me a comparison with ship to ship. Um, how many bullets or how many laser beams I can fire. Uh, in it does put our damage over to 551 uh, versus the six. This one's more accurate, the 1640 in total. Um, when you switch from sustained fire to burst fire, will give you the higher alpha and the 16. You just keep that in mind. It defaults to sustained. You want to if you want to get the burst fire, which is kind of what I typically do is the burst fire. Um, you're initially going to start off at 1640. And then it's going to fade down to 550, which is fine. Now, if you take your power triangle and throw it up towards weapons, damage doesn't go up at all, but you can see your stained fire will go up because you're able to have more laser beams in the pool right? and you're able to fire more of them at the target sustained. So I hope that makes sense. Um, going from 551 with even power triangle, max power triangle up to 840 sustained fire. That's pretty darn good. So there's an example of the sustained burst versus the, or I'm sorry, sustained versus burst fire and, and the, okay. Now let's talk about missiles. So I don't know about you guys, but I've had a really hard time using cross-section missiles. I believe there's a bug in the game. 315, 316 cross-section missiles for me. They're hit and miss. Sometimes they lock on, sometimes they don't. The other issue is um, when you go to a place that reloads your missiles, it won't reload your missiles. I'll tell you, and it'll charge you that it reloads your missiles, but in actuality, it doesn't reload them. So make sure when you rearm, refuel, and all that stuff, and repair, that you're checking to see if your missiles got reloaded. If they didn't, you're going to have to go store your ship, put missiles on there manually, or find some way to claim your ship. And, um, I don't want to get too much into them, other than the fact that missiles here, there's different types. There's cross-section, electromagnetic, and infrared. Uh, infrared, standard heat-seeking missiles, right? Electromagnetic, they use basically radar to lock on. Cross-section is more like an image recognition type of missile. It uses the cross-section of the ship you're firing at to lock onto it. And to Meaning if it has a very small cross-section, it's going to be hard to get a lock uh, using cross-section missiles. Um, if it has a large cross-section, it's much easier. So keep that in mind using cross-section missiles. Missile gameplay has changed. Typically, your electromagnetics do the most damage, but they are also the easiest to spoof. Um, and now don't look at this Rattler 2 like it actually does 2 million. It's a bug with the, the math on this. The Rattler 2 actually is a cluster missile. It shoots and then it breaks up into, I think, seven different little tiny missiles that all go after the target. It's pretty much right in line with the Ignite 2 and the Bullet 2. The missile. Uh, this ship comes standard with Ignite 2s. It's a fine missile. 3,600 damage per missile. Pretty good. I would probably upgrade it to the Dominator 2s. The Magnetic. Or if cross-section was actually working right, I would probably actually go with the Strike. Mostly because I like the 
but it does do good damage, uh, not as much as the Dominator. It's a good missile. Now our missile damage, um, let's let's go up. Um, there's four Ignite 2s. Um, by the way, in Urkel, you can also mess with the um, size of the missile launchers. Because this has two size 2s, it means it's a size 3 hardpoint. You have the, the, the missile racks here. The, the first three means it's a size 3. The one means it can hold one, and then the next number, size three missile. So the MSD-322 means it's a size three hardpoint. It's a missile rack that can hold two size twos. This one is a size three missile launcher um, that can hold four size ones. So that's how the number scheme works. So if we do a 313, you can see it will hold one missile. Thunderbolt three. So we'll go back down to size two. Um, and our default missile damage on this ship is up here. It's 14,774. We can bump that up with the Dominators. 15,500. 15, 15 and a half thousand. Well, it fired all four missiles. That'll kill a lot of ships if all four missiles hit. Okay, so that's... I don't want to... This ship doesn't have a turret, but turrets behave the same way the other weapons do. The difference with the turrets in 315, 316 is uh and 314 is that they have much more ammo because it's 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 a designed gun. even ballistic ammo it has way more ballistic ammo i wait it may not i don't know i i haven't equipped a, a turret plus i think a ballistic it does have a little bit more but it's not significant enough to warrant using ballistic. um i make i hook them all because they run out so quick i hook them all up with laser repeaters um, even in the turrets um, that's just kind of the way I roll with them um, if you're going to outfit a hammerhead it's going to cost you a lot let's just say that especially if you put all size 4 uh, repeaters in there those things are not necessarily cheap 18 grand yeah for, for like 6 7 turrets uh, times 4 so that's a lot of guns a lot of money Okay, let's get into systems. We're going to talk about shields. So the Aegis Avenger Titan is a size one ship. You can tell on Urkel by all the S1s over here. We're going to switch over to um, other Urkel site. We'll just grab a Drake uh, Cutlass Black. So you can see all the S2s over here. These are all size two systems. The shield. Sticking with size one for now. You, you can click on the bulwark here and you can see that there's all kinds of different options here. Civilian, competition, industrial, military, and stealth. Um, the civilians are they're good. Um, I'm going to start recommending them until shields make a big difference. This, this ship comes with two industrial bulwarks. The difference really between industrial and um, and everything else is that industrials are supposed to last a long time. And we actually get engineering in here and we're able to fix our shields and our power plants and stuff like that. Um, the industrials are supposed to last the longest, but they're going to be like very heavy duty grade, just like in real life. Their industrial stuff lasts longer, but they're not always the best performing. Now you can see the way they have shields right now civilian shield, the top shield, the Concord. The competition, the Yachty, I wouldn't recommend that except for a, a ship. Competition means industrial, the Palisade, the military version, which is, should be the highest performing with civilian in the middle. Um, but the FR-66 and then the stealth, the highest stealth shield, they're all the same hit points. 1725, 1725, 1725, 1725. So because shields are so much different right now, what I recommend, um, well, I can say so because they're so nerf right now, what I recommend is just buying the cheapest shield you can find. That's the highest hit point. Because other than that, it's not going to matter. If I grab this Concord right here, you can see it's, it has 1725 hit points and a regen of 450. If I grab the FR-66, it's 1725 hit points with a regen of 450. It's it's pretty much the same shield. Um, 
th there's a couple little differences in between them. Um, it's not much, but like the Concorde and as I'm switching between the Concorde and the FR-66, really the only difference is the distortion max, max damage and the health of the weapon on the ship, which isn't going to matter because you're blown up before. So I would say go with the cheapest version, right? So we can see that the civilian version is 1200 I'm sorry, 12,650 Alpha UEC. These are size ones. The industrial is 23,000. The military is 18,000. Stealth is 28,000. Now, stealth is a whole different subject. We'll do stealth in another video. But between military, industrial, and civilian, the common ones, I would just go with the Concorde here. It is the most, the highest hit point total. Um, it matches the other shields and it's the least expensive so um, that's why i'm sticking with that at least in 316. Um, the same can be said for power plants the endurance uh, is what comes with it it's an industrial grade b if you actually need the power go with it right let me show you over here on urkel this little power guy right here this bar is what you're looking at for power if you're half or below, you're fine. You're not going to run out of power for anything you're going to run. So in this specific case, because EMPs are not actually fully shutting down ships, when they do, it matters how fast the power plant turns back on. But that hasn't been a thing since 3.9, 3.9, I think. So go with uh, probably the stock is enough. As long as you have, you're at half or lower, stay with the stock drive. But if you do want to upgrade go with probably the civilian version or the military version. If you look here, the military JS300, which is what I typically recommend, it has the highest power per second. Um, it actually is going to lower. Um, or it's going to... We have a lower overall pool over here uh, in the power because it doesn't produce as much as the industrial one does. But overall, it's supposed to be faster. But right now in the game, it doesn't really matter. So I'd say save your money. You don't need to buy a Breton. You don't need to buy a JS300, although it's not that bad. It's pretty cheap, 19000 If you really wanted to upgrade, I, look, look at the civilian, twenty four nineteen. Um, it's it's not the highest. It's, it's even less than what comes with the ship, the Endurance. So I would say stick with your stock drive unless you need to upgrade it. And then go through here. You could certainly... Keep it on with an industrial drive. You could go get in, in pretty much the second best would be the military ones, the JS 300s. Last would be the power plant. I'm sorry, the civilian power plants, which are high 2000s here. Next up, coolers. Okay, for the coolers, I don't know. It's a mixed bag. Um, you can see over here in the cooling section, we have 520,000. I'll just say 520. That's how much I would say the coolant reservoir. These are military grade C bracers that come stock. We're using 57,000 or 57 out of 520, right? That's not a lot. It's below an eight. I would say on this particular ship, leave your coolers alone. There's no need to upgrade them. However, if you do want to upgrade them, you can go through and look. I would just go with whatever has probably the most cooling, which would be an ultra flow. But then again, and there's no need to upgrade the coolers on the ship. Um, they're just fine. Nothing's going to overheat. You have plenty of room in there. So don't feel like you don't feel like you have to upgrade that cooler. Um, but if you do, I would probably recommend going with the industrial ultra flows. Um, they are expensive at 27,000 a cooler, but if you want the most cooling, the industrial ones always provide the best. Um, right now, cooling doesn't really seem to have a function with the way they changed afterburner and the way heat generates. So I would say that in some cases, some things do overheat. If they, if you are overheating, upgrade your coolers. If you're not overheating, or if this thing, this uh, cooling bar is half or lower, I'd say you're probably fine. Just leaving it stock. So reset that. Now, I get a lot of contention on <laughs> quantum drives in 316. 
This ship in particular comes with uh, a size one expedition, a civilian grade C. <clears throat> that is a good drive. It's it's not bad. It's 148,000 kilometers a second. It's a pretty quick drive. The quickest drive is going to be the VK00. You can see if I equip that, there's all these little gas pumps over here that are red. That means this sh this drive, even though it's extremely fast, because the Avenger Titan does not have a big enough gas tank, it cannot make it from Port Olisar to anywhere without having to stop for gas. It just, it has to. I know a lot of people already know this, but that's what it means when you have to stop for gas. So when you go with a full stealth build, that typically is what happens here when you go Spectre. Oh, it's just the fastest uh, stealth drive and most stealthy stealth drive. You have to stop for gas. Um, the, the Any of the military drives, none of them are uh, efficient enough where you don't have to stop for gas. I would stay away from the industrial drives. They do last the longest, but they are, one, they're very expensive. Well, they're not too expensive, but they are the slowest drives. You can see with the, even the fastest industrial drive, the Colossus, You'll go from PO to Microtech. It'll take you 11 minutes. That is forever. Um, when you're up to size three drives, like a comma, that it, it takes even longer. I would stay away from competition, although it's they're pretty slow. Um, about like industrial. I would stick with the civilian uh, market on size one drives. So. I used to say go for the Atlas. Why? Because the Atlas is a civilian grade A. It has a really good spool time, meaning it spools up really fast and it spools down really fast. Um, and you can make everything in one jump. Port all to Microtech in eight minutes and eight seconds. However, things have changed recently with some of these. And there is a, a drive called the Voyage. Voyage is uh, six thousand kilometers a second faster um and it's cheaper than the atlas drive um so it's faster it's cheaper and you can go from po to microtech in seven minutes and 49 seconds or with the atlas it was eight minutes and eight seconds i know that's not a ton of time it's 20 some seconds but it's it's quick enough to not even but it's quick enough uh, to, to justify it, and it's cheaper. And the spool up, spool down time is, the, is virtually the same as the Atlas. So I would go with the Voyage. Now, one thing you can do in the other Urkel site that you can't do with this site, with the main site, is check the efficiencies. Let me switch back over to the site. Um, if I click on Quantum Drive here, click on it. I can check the speed, the efficiency, and the max distance of all the drives. So if I go for the fastest drive, BK00 is the fastest drive. If I go for the max distance on a drive, it is the light fire competition C, which is almost the slowest drive, but it is it does let you go the furthest because it has the lowest quantum fuel requirement. Um, for, it only requires 4.9. I don't know what, what unit that is, but it's 4.9. Um, the highest quantum fuel drive, of course, is the, the three military drives. They're going to use up the most fuel because of the fastest. Um, but what I like to look at here is efficiency. Yes, I know the Atlas is on top. The Atlas technically is the most efficient drive you can get. Um, the efficiency is 2.01. Max distance is 77 million uh, kilometers. Um, and it has, uh, here's the speed, right? The quantum fuel requirement is 7.55. Um, but I still would choose the Voyage because it's just a scotch faster. And that 20 seconds saves you 20 seconds. So um, it's not inefficient. 1.73 is pretty darn efficient. Um, it does go 64 million kilometers. So a jump from our corp to PO can happen. Um, you'll be almost out of gas by the time you hit micro, Microtech. I'm sorry, I meant. I meant uh, Microtech to Arcorp, Arcorp to Microtech, which is the farthest jump. And uh, it is just a little bit faster than the Atlas, um, and just a little bit less efficient. So either one of those drives you could go for. So I like that tool on, on the new Urkel site. It's actually pretty helpful. 
if you want now discount this 30 days thing here um if you wanted to go microtech to our court 59 million kilometers it'll take you with the expedition it'll take you eight minutes seconds if you go with the voyage it'll take you eight minutes and two seconds with the atlas it'll take you eight seconds still the same you know nine second um some of the when you click on some of the other uh things like the coolers it'll tell you it's like cooling rate who has the highest cooling rate it's the ultra four um, it'll give you, i mean you could sort by power to power temperature the hit points power request time um the uh competition ones have the fastest power request time for cooling That's why a lot of people used to fly with it when it actually met zero rush and ultra flow kind of balance things out um, when you use it for power plants um you can figure out how much power is coming out with the breton being the industrial grade a the most used to be the most power js 300 down here my recommendation being real close with a good power request time um we can see that the slow uh, the fastest power request time is stealth builds and the competitions and then the military um so there's different tools here uh for shields you check its regen like the fastest regening shield is the stealth shield the cloak tied with the competition falco civilian ink <laughs> but these are all grade d's okay so yeah, they have very fast regen times. Um, but for shields, I like to check the health, which here the civilian uh, conquer we talked about, the FR-66, we talked about the Mirage, the Palisade. They all have the highest hit point pool, and they all have the same regen. They have different HP values, but unless you're trying to target a specific shield, it doesn't really uh, For missiles and things like that, you could also sort by damage by lock time. So for a size 2 missile, if you want the fastest lock time, it would be the Ignite 2, Emperor. Uh, the Strike Force 2, the Tempest 2, those are all the same lock time. So really good tools here um, for laser repeaters. Uh, you can check uh, ammo capacity, I guess, here. Um, under ammos, uh, the alpha damage, you can sort by uh, you can sort by the burst DPS, the range, the whole, the whole gamut here is up at your disposal. If we switch over to a size two ship, things do change. So we'll pick the Cutlass Black. Um, for weapons, I would say stick with the same thing. I would stick with the uh, CF337s times four, right? Because there's four of those weapons on a Cutlass Black. Uh, go ahead and do that. See that our uh, sustained damage is 652, but our burst damage is 2000. Quite high. A lot of damage coming from the black. Of course, it's 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 got more weapons. It's got a man turret. It comes stock with two size two or two size three Panthers, which I would leave alone. I actually like the missile loadout on the uh, the Cuddy, so I'm not going to change it. But feel free to go ahead and do that. When we get to size two shields, um, we can go ahead and hop hop up here and, and pick what has the highest health pools. The civilian, uh, it looks the same thing. The civilian grade A, the military grade A, the industrial grade A, the stealth grade A, they all have the same hit point pool, right? Same region. Hit points for the weapons themselves are a little bit different, but everything else is the same. So really, same thing here. Just choose what is cheapest. The Lorca, which is civilian grade A, is 30,000 for the shield. The FR-66 is 38. Uh, the Rampart is 53. That used to be the meta using the Rampart. Stealth Drive is 56. So I would, yes, I would say use the Lorica. Uh, for power plants for size 2 ship, I would go if I... Now, we can look at the meter here. We're a little bit over half. So we, we could probably use an upgrade to the power plant. It's a civilian grade A. It's a good power plant. Um, if you wanted to upgrade it, you could. Um, wait, wait, that's a shield. Sorry. If you wanted to upgrade, let me start over on that. If you want to upgrade the power plant daybreak, which is a civilian grade C, sorry about that, y'all. Um, you could sort it by power. The Genoa, the Sedulity, the Diligence, the Trauma, the JS400, you know, on and on and on. 
What has the most power always is the industrial grade A's. But the Daybreak, this civilian grade C, is 5938 on power. I would put on a JS400, which is a huge upgrade, or a Quadrocell MT. Either one, they're, they're almost identical drives. Um, JS400, a little bit faster power request time. It goes for 53,000. That's expensive. Quadrocell goes for 56, even more expensive. The, uh, the Genoa, the industrial, 150. For a power plant. So I would upgrade on the Cutty Black. I would stick with a JS400 and look at our power pool over here. We're we're just about at a almost to a third. Um about at a third. Um and that's perfect. That's that's exactly where you want to be. Our coolers, um, we can look at our cooling here. Thought coolers on this ship. 4,000 times two, so it's 8,000. That's a ton. We're using 262 out of 8,000. I wouldn't change it at all. For civilian grade C's, if you have a problem with grade C, you could, you could upgrade. Uh, if you were going to upgrade, I would go with the industrial size two snowpacks. But I'm not going to. The quantum drive, um, here we go again, right? There's Here's a difference with size two ships versus uh, size one ships. Size two ships are usually bigger, and they have a bigger quantum fuel tank. Um, and you can check that by checking the, the actual ship uh, statistics how big the quantum fuel tank is or you, you could be here at urkel and let's say we pick an xl1 the fastest drive the military drive you can see that we can make it from microtech to arc corp in four and a half minutes um with no problem we don't need to go get gas at all um there's no drive that, that is size two that we're gonna have to go get gas so while we're still in the stanton system i would go with the fastest drive that they have which is an XL1. However, an XL1 costs 94,000 credits. The second fastest drive, the Jaeger, uh, costs 74,000 credits. And the third fastest drive, not and it's not by much, just the Crossfield, costs 59,000 at its lowest. This is what I recommend is going with a Crossfield military grade C. Yeah, it's a few seconds slower jumping across the entire system. But it's a few seconds, and the amount of credits you save is significant. Um, here on right here. Yep. 59,000 compared to 94,000. So I would definitely, definitely recommend the Crossfield for size two ships. Now, let's move on to size three ships. The Caterpillar. The Drake Caterpillar. Actually, let's, let's go with something. Say, I think a C. Yep. The size three uh, ship. Again, same thing with the weapons. These things come with laser cannons. I wouldn't do, be doing a whole lot of combat with a C2, but if you expect to do any combat, I would probably go with the laser repeaters, um, which would be the Rhino 447 if you, if you stayed gimbaled, which you might want to do. Um, up to you. The turrets, I would also change out the cannons for repeaters. For the shields, C2. Size 3 shields. It's a big shield. Um, it's huge. Uh, a lot of the bigger ships, like an 890 Jump, um, they have bespoke shields. You cannot change that shield. It comes with the shield, and that's the only shield you get. You can't change them out. So uh, There are some ships, though, that have uh, these size 3 shields that you can't change out. The Starlifter, the C2, comes with a Stronghold Shield, which is, which is an industrial grade C, and it's a total of 100,000 hit points for each shield. I would probably upgrade this to, you could either go with the FR-86, the Parapet, or the Nargun Civilian Grade A Shields, cost 100,000 shield, but you're getting 15,000 hit points more. So if you double that up, you're at a hundred. I'm sorry. You're at two hundred thirty thousand hit points. Just two hundred thousand. You can see where that really probably isn't going to make a huge difference. I would probably leave my industrial grade C's in there because the the difference in switching in size three just isn't enough to justify the cost. You're going to pay two hundred grand for thirty thousand more hit points. Eh, if you're in a small ship, sure. But if you're in a large ship like this, no way. 
The military grade A's go up to 136,000 alpha UBC, and the industrial grade A's are 169. And that used to be the meta was to use the parapets uh, because they actually charged up really fast. Um, and they did have the most hit points for a long time. But nowadays, if you did want to upgrade, I would go with the cheapest uh, civilian grade A's, which are for power plants. Um, you can see our power over here. We are at 8,000 out of 50,000. There's no need to upgrade this power plant on a C2. And most size three ships are the same. But if you absolutely had to, um, I would probably recommend a JS 500, which kicks the power up to 42,500. It's, it's a faster power request time, but the power plant that comes with this is industrial. It's at 50,000. It's higher than the JS 500 anyway. So there's no need to upgrade the ship to begin with. There's no need to spend 139,000 credits to upgrade the ship. For coolers, we can see we're using 1100 out of 32,000 for our coolers. They're industrial grade C's. I wouldn't touch them at all. The only thing you're going to get uh, is Chill Max industrial grade A's. You're going to get 1600 more cooling per cooler, which there's no need to do that. That's why you got to use these websites to determine um, what you need to upgrade if you need to upgrade for that ship, especially after the money reset. And money can be pretty tight for a lot of people. Upgrade the stuff you need to. You, there's no reason to go out and then get you know grade a components and military components because in the game right now it doesn't even matter the, the once once it actually matters then you know go upgrade your components but for right now you know if you don't need to leave it alone and finally let's talk about the quantum drive for the size three quantums um comma i hate this drive. it's Incredibly slow. If you look at it, it's 59,000 kilometers a second. Microtech to Arcorp, it legitimately takes 17 minutes. 17 minutes in quantum. Now, that's great when you want to save gas. It's probably one of the most efficient drives out there. Let's look at efficiency. 0.2 is our highest, um, which is the Echo Civilian Grade D. I would probably never put a grade D... <laughs> component on my ship because in time the grade a b c d is gonna win. um but i would probably put an agni on my ship if i really wanted to have the efficiency in gas um but here's the comma 0.15 efficiency for these quantum drives that's really good but it'll take you forever to get anywhere so uh, on these drives especially just in the stanton system these have a huge quantum fuel tank and hydrogen fuel tank i would go with the fastest drive we look at the TS2. This is going to be weird. The TS2 is the fastest drive, 208,000 kilometers a second. TS2 costs 93,000. We only buy it in a couple places, but 93k. If we go to the second fastest drive, the military Gray B, the Ballandin, costs 142,000. That's almost 50,000 more for a, a, a Gray B drive versus a Grade A drive. This Gray B drive is slower doesn't make a lot of sense the ponties which come stock with like the caterpillar which i would just leave in there i wouldn't have. but uh this drive goes for 117 so it's less expensive than the grade b which it should be but it's it's not less expensive than the grade a so with size three drives uh, size three ships i would go with the ts2 it's what makes the most sense it's 208 thousand kilometers a second you can make it from microtech to art corp in five and a half minutes that's really fast. The fastest you're going to go in the game with a size three ship. Now, moving on to something that has like bespoke things like an 890 jump. Um, you see where these things are locked here. I can't change the shields. I can't change the power plants. I can't change the coolers. I can't change the quantum drive. All this stuff is bespoke. You get what you get on these ships. Um, not that they're bad. They're all industrial grade A, civilian grade A, civilian grade A, civilian grade A. These are good ships, good drives, good shields, uh, good power plants. Uh, you can change the missiles. You can change what weapons are on there. Um, a lot of different stuff there. Go nuts on that stuff, but a lot of these, you know, spoke ships, you just can't touch them. So there we go, folks. Um, I will put the links to both of these websites in the description below. 
I hope you've enjoyed um, learning a little bit about systems, shields, paints. I'm sorry, shields, power plants, coolers, quantum drive. Um, we won't. We haven't touched the side over here. Paints, radars, the thrusters. All, this does give you a paint layout of the paints, although you can only buy some of them in game. Um, some of them are locked to subscriber only, or you have to buy them on the store. We can't upgrade our radars or our thrusters right now. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little tutorial on Urkel and how to upgrade your ship. Go out there and use these sites. Uh, make an account. Save it. Um, I, whoever created Urkel, dude, you're the man. Um, if this site does come out of date, you can hit Control F5 and update it. It'll even tell you to. And then you can switch here between the PTU and live build. Let's see if it Roll F5. Yep. So even even I don't even update it. But it's not like anything changed. So here's the only build 316 live. Roll F5 does that update. So enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please uh, considering consider liking and subscribing to the video. Joe and I can always use the support from the community. Uh, if you're interested in joining us uh, on some of our streams, you can, we can be found at the Sons of Valhalla Discord. The link is in the description below. If you'd like to check out any of our other social medias or, you know, whatever, uh, you can you can find all of our links at fistandjawa.org. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Luminalia, uh, whatever holiday you celebrate. Um, happy Yule. Um, Thanks for watching.